I am Richard Human. I am a retired professional electrical engineer. I went to Brooklyn Polytechnic Institute and received the Bachelor of Electrical Engineering degree in 1954. I worked for Joseph Loring uh, for 41 years and was principal chief electrical engineer for the World Trade Center complex. I was uh, trained in uh, Fort Belvoir School to uh, I use demoli demolition practices on bridges and other structures and as well as roadways. On September 11th I was uh, watching live TV from my kitchen and saw the whole thing. I saw the repetition of the actual incidents uh, and uh, uh, thereafter, I was in a state of shock because I, uh, it was unbelievable to me, knowing the strength of the structures, that the single incident of a plane impacting and fuel burning would be the, only, be the reason for the towers to collapse. I just did not believe it. It was like a, a dream, a nightmare. After watching the DVD from the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, I was compelled to look into the matter uh, in much more detail in my mind and in my memory. And uh, even though I'm an electrical engineer, I took basic courses in structure while going to college, as well as physics and industrial chemistry. So I'm not unknowledgeable about these, uh, these trades. I was impressed by the level of detail and information that was presented in the DVD. I strongly feel that an international commission should be formed to look at this matter uh, in an unbiased manner and come to a conclusion that could be presented to the entire engineering community. Well, uh, I would be more comfortable if I said something first that the uh, uh, that the the pancake theory that was initially proposed uh, did not work. It was uh, 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 not feasible because if, if the floors pancaked, the columns would still be standing. That would have meant all the connectors to the girders on both sides, in, interior and exterior columns, would have been disconnected for the pancake theory to work. So it's an invalid theory. The only way that I can see that the towers could have collapsed is that the interior columns were compromised. And by being compromised, the center of the towers would become virtual black holes, sucking everything in to the center of the of the of the towers. I was very familiar with uh, the twin towers elevator systems uh, because uh, we took over uh, conceptual maintenance and improvements of the elevator systems after the the project was completed. Uh, I actually ran and rode up and down elevator shafts on the top of a car going 1,200 feet a minute. Uh, you could imagine the experience. I'm, I'm very familiar with the interior structure uh, that surrounded the elevator shafts and uh, the accessibility which the elevator companies had 24-7 and could visualize that the columns 
could have been set up with uh, explosive devices uh, and during uh, the off hour operations of the building by elevator company personnel. The elevator company generally did work at night <laughs> uh, when the building was closed down. And I believe uh, elevator personnel uh, uh, had uh, could have been involved uh, because they had 24-7 access to the shafts, which is the normal time in the evening and early morning hours when they perform their maintenance. And, uh, of course, uh, their access to the elevator shafts gave them total access to the surrounding core columns, the interior of the core columns. Now, I, I even uh, expounded the theory that uh, the, uh, uh, this collapse may have started at the top where the, the floor uh, gave way under the weight of the substation transformers, uh, which weighed like over 30,000 pounds apiece, and there was four on one side, four on the other. Uh, and, and once they had gone through, they would have cascaded down and down. But uh, again, if that happened, the interior columns and the exterior columns would still be standing. <laughs> uh, they were independent structures that, uh, uh, as I explained before, that the uh, the interior column Faraday cage belted around each floor with deep girders what stood alone from the exterior columns also belted with with deep girders uh, and uh, the, the purpose of the floor trusses was simply to support a concrete floor. Now the connections made I believe the connections made did not fail between the girders and the trusses uh, because, uh, as I mentioned before, the black hole effect, everything was sucked inward and the pin connections that, that uh, held the exterior columns uh, to the trusses were pulled inwards towards the middle. And I, I visualize only the interior columns being compromised by falling within each other like a telescope. And that could only have been done by explosive charges. Uh, there were uh, four on each side of the towers. Uh, uh, there were two substations on the 108th floor uh, the 75th floor and the 41st floor and the 7th floor. Uh, at those four locations, uh, those eight locations, there were four transformers in each substation that weighed over 30,000 pounds, I believe, but in that area. And uh, they're certainly very, uh, the, the heaviest part of the mechanical floor uh, were those transformers, the air handlers, uh, anything else that was up there was inconsequential as far as weight goes. The transformers would not explode on their own. They were air-cooled, dry-type transformers. Uh, the, for them to be totally pulverized at the bottom it, it was a shame that after the collapse that a, a forensic engineering unit didn't go into the debris and try to find at that time why the towers had collapsed. I'm sure there was other evidence uh, that, that could have given a better indication at the time that there was something else wrong. Well, they didn't, they didn't take them out. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, I, I recall seeing a, a public uh, television uh, uh, show, a PBS show, 
uh, where the firemen were in the lobby of, uh, I, I forget whether it was Tower 1 or Tower 2, but the plane had already hit. And what I noticed was the lights were still on in the lobby. Now, I, that, that led me to believe that the, the plane never got to the core columns because the feeds for all these transformers feeding all the light and power in the towers uh, were adjacent to the core columns. The, the uh, 15 kV feeders that fed these transformers and they were attached and they were wire armor cable in conduit attached to the side of the of, uh, of two of the core columns going up each tower. And if the lights were still on, the substations were still operational at the, right after the, the planes impacted. Uh, there were 32 uh, 30,000 pound plus maybe transformers power transformers in the substations on the mechanical floors in each tower and yet after the collapse uh, there was uh, as from what was reported there was no evidence of them being found at the bottom of the towers uh, I wonder why <laughs> when I was watching uh, reviewing uh, again and again when they repeated the collapse of the towers. I noticed uh, in Tower 1, uh, unless my eyes were deceiving me, before the tower started collapsing from the top, the antenna started to fall. And the antenna uh, of course, was over the middle of the elevator shafts. And it, I, I could see that antenna just falling down through the shafts directly to, to the bottom before the entire tower did collapse. And I, I questioned too, why the tower started collapsing from the top down? Why not at the point of impact? Uh, that it, it did, that didn't make sense to me at all. The plane, the fuel, and the fire that emanated was not sufficient to bring those towers down alone.